Hello guys, it's Peter from PS Sound. And this video from this Insignia high-end sound quality install um, is, is rather special because it's not something I can do very often, especially in UK where we don't have space in the kicks for mid-bass install. Um, we can consider this video as like another video for the car audio fabrication tricks and uh, tips playlist I have or it could even be the part of the sound quality in-car playlist because currently we are at 7.2 with that one I haven't forgotten that series either uh, but this video is gonna be great as 7.3 which is gonna be the extreme speaker installation part so okay let's chop this video together because um, I think I have around 20 videos to edit to put together for you guys to show this mid bass install so yeah, wish me luck, let's see. So the floor got a, a layer of um, masking tape and then two layers of resin proof tape. And then uh, three, four layers of chop mat, the 800 gram per square meter, pretty thick uh, woven mat. Um, and it's looking pretty good. Now I can come out, get trimmed. Um, and then you will see the next steps. Well, that's the other side, by the way. The mold was trimmed and it's put back into place. Um, and then now I have to measure out the floor because it has to be even. I can't just drop a plate on it and then it may become wonky. Um, so I'm putting little supporters which are measured out and on level. So when I make the bottom piece, then uh, I'll be I'll be sure that, you know, it's as much in level as possible. So this is going to be flat. Then the footrest area is going to be flat. And the speaker is going to go somewhere in there. And I have to build up that area behind the driver so technically the enclosure is gonna have three uh, areas um, under the feet under the footrest and then behind the driver and rough estimate is already looking great because it, it looks really shallow you know it doesn't look like much uh, the average height down here is only like five centimeter but because it's really wide it's, it's equal to around nine liters. Most people can't create such a big enclosure on the door, along the door. And you know, this is already bigger and I will have around seven liter up there that's already 16 and at least seven, eight behind the driver. So at the time I add that up um, and then we also take into consideration that these walls will be uh, having sanding sheets. Uh, it will have milkshake poured into it that will take a slightly bit away, but I will still have at least 20 liters, which is fantastic. Because yeah, it's shallow, but you know, if let's say if we cut this enclosure in half and we doubled the height here, then, um, you know, it would be somewhere around there. And that would be a pretty big box already. So instead of having something narrower, higher, we are having something way wider, but shallower. And the sealed enclosure, the shape doesn't really matter, only the airspace it has to be airtight and that's it. So yeah, this is a bit fiddly and then I have to build it up step by step. And then driver's side had to be measured out as well, with the only difference that here, it can't be flat all the way under the panels because that would uh, be too much raise. So around to that point, um, the floor is gonna, let's see, the, um, the floor is gonna be flat but then from that point on, it's going to have a slope, giving a bit more distance for the um, heels. And that's how the original carpet was as well under the pedals. So I'm trying to mimic that, not to cause any issues to the pedals. The braces for the bottom part are in, um, which looks like just two small uh, pieces of wood uh, with holes drilled in it. But it's not as simple to make because it has to be perfectly in level with the floor. So when I put the uh, top plate on, then there's no gap between the brace and the top plate. They can be bonded, um, glued and screwed together. 
so because of the floor is not really straight it's it's slightly tricky but uh, it's now done on both sides the mounting points uh, were also <sighs> drilled through so in the floor i've got the you can see you see it here clearly the uh, rivet nut in the floor so that's where it, this whole structure is going to be bolted down through the speaker mounting hole uh, once it's molded all around and those two boards go in this will have zero chance to move anywhere um, also the floor wheel get a two mil form all around so once it goes in it won't rattle it won't have any surface rattle at all so that's brazed once the top plate goes on it gets bonded all around then milkshake inside and then i can carry on with the rest a bit of a jump in time <laughs> um, so the top plate is now bonded in um, as you see it's a fiber filler all around bonded into the edges and then uh, it's screwed to the braces underneath and also glued with PU adhesive. And then finally, I, uh, I went a bit too further with the adhesive and you can see how much it expands. Someone was telling me in a, in a previous video that PU wood adhesive is, is, is the worst idea ever. Okay, I'll just leave it there. <laughs> um, but that definitely fills the gaps and, and it makes a stronger bond than, than the wood, you know, the glue won't fail. And then, as you can see, it was all, all pulled out with milkshake as well. So it fills everything in there, all the edges, all the gaps. All the way. So that's the, you know, the extension airspace on the floor for the kick build. And then now I have to build it up. Oh, if I find the ring. So yeah, on driver's side, the driver is going to be roughly around there and then passenger side roughly around there. So we still have enough leg space for the passenger. It won't be intrusive at all. So yeah, let's see. Let's see how I get on. The passenger uh, footrest also gets bonded in with a decent uh, brace underneath to stiffen it up. Stiffen up the button, fiberglass, as well as you know, this piece. It's gonna be proper rock solid. Here we are in the car. So the enclosures now are dropped in. Uh, it's not bonded together at the, at the front yet. It doesn't have to be. Um, so I put the speaker ring in place. So the floor is the original OEM floor after the really thick, like it was like that carpet came out and it's absolutely fine for the pedals as it's auto, um, it's, it's way easier. To be fair, if we had the clutch over there, I don't think we would have had space for the speaker over there. And I have a feeling that I'm going to make a footrest here like that. So at least it can be put up there like that, uh, nice and thick. Um, so we won't transmit any vibration through. It's better than, you know, driving like that. If, if you can put your leg there, because um, obviously this is, this is a bit of a sacrifice, but sacrifices ha have to be made. The other option would have been, you know, to, to cut the steel work and push the driver even further out, but then still you wouldn't be able to uh, rest your leg over there any, anymore, but it's, it's pretty good and then the other side is way easier because um, the floor and and the footrest is, is the same level as original it was plenty of space for the passenger yes that that's taken away but you know two feet can easily fit there even for tall people so it's absolutely fine it's not like some people build uh, front sub enclosures in the foot well and they come out straight all the way and then you know like is definitely uh, crushed then so now, as the speakers are in place, um, well, speaker rings, I'm taking them out and jigsaw puzzle, jigsaw puzzle is, is kicking off and I have to make this look like an enclosure or something.
So now all the pieces are puzzled in. As you see, most of it is 18 mil plywood. Um, we have the braces here, there, and over there. And that's much of that I made of, of wood as, as you know as I could make it. You can see I have to, you know, uh, sand that down a little bit more before I start filling over there as well and a bit of that edge as well because I want it nice and smooth to make it easier for uh, trimming. All the little gaps uh, were taped from the inside, inside there as well. Um, and then a couple of places so when I, I fill it up with um, fiber filler then it's not going to fall through because then you just keep fetting and, and, and you know you use a lot and, and you, you, you like you know it's never ending. Um, you can nicely see the bolting points now that will um, get get the bolts going into the threaded inserts in the chassis. A little step by step. Here we go. So this is what they look like once they are in the car. And actually now you can see the stage when um, it's molded to the carpet and the, the interior of the car. So even without actually uh, fixing it into place with uh, machine boards into the rib nuts in the floor through the speaker hole, this thing wouldn't go anywhere. Uh, it's gonna be super tight fit once it's also trimmed. Um, and this side is uh, way better now. Because many people were worried about, you know, uh, the left leg, where you could rest the left leg, because, oh yeah, you're gonna stick it into the speaker, yeah. Obviously, when you have a car like this, like a, a no compromise SQ build, you are conscious that you have a speaker that's so you're not gonna kick it. Uh, it's just as simple as that. Yes, you can't rest it on it, you don't want to do that with an expensive speaker um, and it's not comfortable to leave your leg like this because it's going to stretch your foot um, or you know sit like that or pull your knee up that high so i came up with this idea to create a foot rest which feels really good to me yes it, you can't stretch it there as it was originally because it was around there where the speaker is but it still feels good. It feels pretty good to me, to be fair. Um, and when you cruise with the cruise control anyway, you don't keep your foot on the pedal either. You pull this leg up as well, the same way. So it's just fine. You can see the bolts actually inside over there, one on the top and one at the bottom. Those are the fixing points that hold the whole enclosure in place. Um, so now I just have to pull the whole structure out, uh, sand it back, make it smooth, and it's ready for trimming. That was a bit of a delay uh, because I just simply ran out of resin. I use so much resin in, 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 in everything in this build. Um, and I needed more to fill up the inside with milkshake. Because um, obviously the bottom part was done before you could see it. But once that top section was built, then that area had to be pulled out as well, all, all the gaps sealed inside. And I added steel shots, as you see, really fine steel powder into the mix, just to add extra weight to, to the build. So it's pretty rigid all around and it seals the gaps, as you see, everywhere. So now it's ready for the big test to pour it up with water. Although it's gonna be interesting because it's quite an awkward shape. Um, if, if, yeah, it's gonna be interesting, but I, I, I'll try my best to fill it up. So, <laughs> as you see, um, I was trying to start with this area up to the level of the buffle. So like till that point on, that's now 5.6 liter. 
um, which excludes that area, which is not much, probably like half a litre. So we could say that this kick area is roughly six litre. Then now I have to transfer this water. Maybe if I tip it carefully, then all the water is gonna flow over to the bomb section. And I have to fill up the bomb section to the level of, of that to see how much that is. Combine the two, you know, here and there. And uh, I should roughly get how big this one is. And uh, my little pencil sharpener was taped up at the bottom and I have a little bolt now. But the good thing is, I see zero leakage. The water has been in it for like five minutes now. There's nothing coming out. And if the water doesn't come out, air doesn't come out. So the floor part now has been filled up as well, kind of to the level of, of the floor and that's seven liter. So roughly seven, roughly 5.6 to 12.6 liter for the driver's side. I was hoping for a little bit more, but to be fair, I poured so much milkshake into it, probably like two liters overall, um, that yeah, it would have been then roughly around 14 and a half, closer to 15 that I was aiming for. But ultimately 12.6 liter for a six and a half is already fantastic and passenger side is going to be more anyway, where we need more volume. So, good news. There are a few little bits of signs of leakage, as you can see there. It's still leaking through at a few points, but then now it's easy to see where it is, and then I can fill that up from the outside to make sure that nothing can escape from this enclosure. Oh, silly me, little correction with the driver's side box because I thought I had seven liter at the bottom and in fact it was eight and a half because I forgot I had an extra uh, the measuring um, piece which is one and a half liter also into it because there was only two liter left in the bucket when I went to fill up uh, again and measure up again for the passenger side so it means 5.6 and and eight and a half that's 14.1 uh, litre for the driver's side. Give or take a little bit, at least 14 litre for driver's side. So in this one now, I already have, um, so that's one and a half and a half litre there, it's two litre uh, minus 10 and a half, it's eight and a half litre in this, nearly a full bucket. Eight and a half at this bottom section till the bottom fall. So it goes, the water goes to like that the whole top section and then as you see to that point so roughly to to there so this bottom section is now eight and a half of course we have the kick area I will try to measure there will be overlaps when I measure the bottom this and the kicks but we may get that so that's eight and a half now then I pour it probably now to the floor area so the water that was there the, at the uh, foot rest uh, was transferred into the floor area and it's slightly above the, the floor level inside, if I reach in, not much. So I would say that's roughly around eight liter. So we measured eight and a half there, eight here with a bit of overlap. So at least we definitely have 15 in that space. And then now I have to deal with the cakes. So that eight and a half was transferred into the kicks and over here it doesn't even reach and the top of the buffle. Uh, but obviously those corner areas are kind of overlapping when I was measuring the previous two. Um, it's, it's difficult to tell really that area, but it's definitely at, at least as much as on driver's side, the kick, maybe a little bit bigger, roughly six. So, yeah, if, let's say if those two from the previous measurements overlap in at least 15, then this is at least six. We can easily say that. Then we definitely have more than 20, 21 litre. I was estimating it to 22, 23. Maybe we have that much, but it's, it's difficult to tell exactly because what could I use? I could use plastic balls to fill it up, but then if something stuck somewhere and I can't get it out, then, then what? I don't want anything to be left inside of the box, move around or whatever, 
water is gonna pour out and the box is gonna dry out. And actually this also shows me little leakage areas like here as well. I have nice little leakage that I marked up with a Sharpie. So now I can go over the box from the outside and fill every, every single little hole to make sure that this box is super, super sealed. Um, so yeah, what did this test give us really? A rough, a rough idea about you know how big it is. To be fair, the estimate estimation from the beginning was close to it anyway, uh, and in sealed it doesn't matter that much really how accurate it is. So yeah, we are around 15 and 2021 20, on on passenger side, 15 on driver side, and then 2021 20, on on passenger side. What I'm happy with that's that's what I want really because. Uh, these enclosure sizes are bigger than my, my door enclosures in my Honda 48, which are only 12 and a half, 13 liter. So these are way bigger for the six and a half. So yeah, it should be really wicked. This is the passenger side enclosure in place. As you can see, I trimmed that with vinyl to give the details back. Whereas the floor got a proper like formula thick, really durable carpet. Um, and I want to show you the mounting inside. You can see the two boards that go into the threaded inserts into the um, into the floor. Well, rib nuts more exactly. And then this is where the speaker cables come in through blends. Because they have rubber seal inside and once you tighten it up, it seals the cable completely. Um, the cables will get ring terminals which come with the speaker uh, so it will be direct connection straight from the amps onto the drivers and I will fit the threaded inserts uh, once the drivers are in my hand that's where the speaker cable is running and I can literally shake the whole car um, from just grabbing the kick build you know nothing is gonna rattle there that's for sure Unfortunately, I don't really have much footage that I could um, put into this current video to show what it was like when it was finished. So I have to ask you guys, please, to go into the previous videos where I have a walk around from the finished state, uh, plus the previous one as well when I was showing the uh, rear fill um, fabrication, the secret behind good sounding pillars. Please check out that one as well because in that you can see a bit of bit of a footage when it shows the kick build when it's fully finished in those videos you will see everything but i can't put any of the footage into this one because you would expect to hear what it was sounding like but if i put that into this feed video then copyright is gonna just you know it, that's that's a bit of a pain and when people tell me you know why my channel is not growing it, this is one of the reasons because i share so many videos with music playing in it that uh that video doesn't help my business at all or it doesn't help my my channel at all so yeah sorry guys for that but um hopefully you've seen something something really cool from this footage um and yeah it's it's pretty crazy that you know we push this project out roughly around 450 hours put into this build um i probably took like 60 videos showing everything you know the sub enclosure install um, the unboxing videos the c pillar install and i still have the dashboard installation for the mid-range so yeah it's a lot it's definitely a lot to to process um and I'm, I'm just trying to catch up as well the car the car was was gone now what a week ago i can't even follow it yeah the car left a week ago so yeah we are, we are definitely very happy with it probably i will talk about what the result was like or why it's cool to build these kicks in the sound quality in car series in 7.3 where we will talk about extreme speaker installations but i will share uh, the installation of the mid-range in, in this insignia in the next video so at least we covered those um then then you have an idea about what's happening when i, I will talk about those parts so guys i got it here hopefully you like you like this video it's a rather long video and um yeah hopefully i can i can bring the next video very soon in a few days till then take care